that the commandments given to Moses by God on Mount Sinai were blue, that they were made from blue sapphire stone. In Exodus chapter 24, verse 10, we read, And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Moses and the rest of Israel's leadership were given the profound privilege of seeing God. God appeared in the person of the Son as he expressed God's image to man, as we can read in John 1.18 and John 14.9. Under God's feet was something that appeared to be sapphire. The Hebrew word sapphire, pronounced sapir, can either be translated as sapphire or lapis luzi. It is from this pavement that God carved out of the tablets upon which he wrote the law as recorded in Exodus 24, verse 12. Exodus 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tablets of stone, and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. The sapphire is the only type of stone mentioned in scriptural context. It would be a leap to conclude that the tablets were made from any other type of stone other than that which was recorded in the scripture. Unfortunately, many do not even consider the sapphire tablets an option because they have been unconsciously influenced by western images of the Ten Commandments. No doubt that the Charlton Heston film alone has cemented certain imagery into our culture which is a fine movie in any respect, and is one that I myself very much enjoy. Many do not even realize that God himself wrote the commandments with his own finger, as we read in Exodus 31 verse 18. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Another very interesting concept in the scriptures is that the sapphire stone or ta tablets or tables, that the commandments which were written on by God's own finger came directly from the tiles of God's own throne. Through reading in the scriptures, think to yourself, think through my other videos, where is the location of God's throne? It is above the firmament. We will consider this in Ezekiel 1, verse 26. And above the firmament that was over their heads was a likeness of a throne, as the appearance of sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. One look into the absolute beautiful blue sky that God created. We know that just atop it, above the firmament, sits God's throne. This is why the sky is truly blue, as the firmament which is made of a terrible crystal, that crystal is sapphire stone. To those that doubt the firmament and doubt that it is a dome that surrounds our earth, we must take into account several verses in God's word. In Job 9.8 we read, it is by himself spread out the heavens, or the Shemaim. We hear this in Psalms 19.1, where the heavens tell out the glory of God. The vault of heaven reveals his handiwork. In Psalm 102.25, it speaks of the heavens were thy handiwork. In Isaiah 45, verse 12, I with my own hand stretched out the heavens and caused all their host to shine. In Isaiah 48:13 we read, With my right hand I have formed the expanse of the sky. The vault of heaven is a very crucial concept. The word firmament appears in the King James Version of the Old Testament 17 times, and in each case it is transliterated from the Hebrew word rakia, which meant the visible vault of the sky. 
The word rakia comes from rakia, meaning beaten out. In ancient times, brass objects were either cast in the form required or beaten into the shape of an anvil. A good craftsman could beat a lump of cast brass into a thin bowl. Thus, Elihu asks Job, Can you beat out the vault of the skies as he does, hard as a mirror of cast metal? We read this in Job 37, verse 18. Elihu's question shows that the Hebrews considered the vault of heaven a solid, physical object. Such a large dome would be a tremendous feat of engineering. The Hebrews and Yahweh himself considered it exactly that. And as I spoke of in my previous video, the greatest mystery of earth revealed to speaking of Ezekiel's wheels, this picture of the cosmos is reinforced by Ezekiel's vision. The Hebrew word rakira appears five times in Ezekiel, four times in Ezekiel 1, verse 22 through 26, and once in Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 1. In each case, the context requires a literal vault or dome. The vault appears above the living creatures, or the four cherubim, the pillars of earth, and glitters like a sheet of ice. Above the vault is the throne of sapphire. Seated on the throne is a form in human likeness, which is radiant and like the appearance of glory of the Lord. In short, Ezekiel saw a vision of God sitting throned on the vault of heaven, as described clearly in Isaiah 40, verse 22. The figure upon this throne was the likeness of the glory of Yahweh in Ezekiel 1:28. Like the appearance of God to the elders of Israel, this too was God in the person of the Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ. These two accounts of God appearing are of such a similarity that it is reasonable to conclude that the sapphire foundation and the sapphire throne are one and the same. Not only were the tablets written on by God, but they were themselves a work of God as we can see in Exodus 32.16. The tablets coming from the tiles of God's throne is consistent with both the narrative and the foundational importance of God's law. This directly explains why in the book of Numbers we have the blue ribboned in the Zitzit tassels. We read in Numbers 15 verse 37 through 39, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes on the, in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders of a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye use to go a whoring. As we know, the first set of the commandments was broken by Moses. We read this in Exodus 32, 15-19. In anger towards the Israelites for worshipping the golden calf, which is essentially Canaanite idolatry. But in Exodus 34, we clearly see God telling Moses to make a new set out of the same stones, in which God says he will rewrite them. Exodus 34, 1, we read, And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tablets of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tablets the words that were in the first tablets which thou breakest. Many claim these new stones were taken from the foot of the mountain, but that is not what the scripture says in its full context. We continue reading in Exodus 34, verse 2 through 4. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the mountain unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tablets of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. In Exodus chapter 33, we see that Moses set the tabernacle outside of the camp due to the idolatry of the Israelites. In Exodus 33.9 we read, And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. 
The cloudy pillar is where God's throne resides, as it is obvious that the same tile stones would be in the pillar of cloud, as we read in Exodus 24.10. As it is the same cloudy pillar that descended on Mount Sinai in which the first stones came from that God wrote the first commandments on. Exodus 24, verse 16, we read, The glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The new commandments were then placed inside the ark. In Exodus 25, 16, we read, And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. The idea is that the tiles of the pavement of God's throne are blue according to scripture. In any number of contextual studies of the tabernacle, inevitably colors and metals are a component of how we interpret each item. If sapphire blue means the righteous law of God on which his throne is established, one of the most important colors of the tabernacle is now revealed. The three colors coded into the veil and the curtain are blue. God's perfect legal righteousness. Scarlet red is a picture of blood, and purple the blend of blood and law. The whole thing is a picture of redemption from the sinfulness back to God's righteousness requirement through blood, which ultimately was a picture of the sacrifice of the Messiah. As we mix the color of blue with the color of red, we get the color purple. And we read... In Mark 15, verse 17, And they clothed him with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns, and put it about his head. So in the end, after the tabernacle was erected on the cross, which is Christ our Lord, God's throne, the mercy seat, still resides on the blue sapphire pavement, broken by man, redeemed by God, the curtains show righteousness, blood, and redemption. All glory to God. Amen. To those that will ask me, will you take the red pill or the blue pill? I'm going to tell them, no, I choose to take the purple pill. I choose to follow the narrow path which leads to the narrow gate, which is Jesus Christ.